Hello everyone, welcome back to another review. Today we're looking at good stuff. Uh, this is the Hornby Stepney. I figured I would really look how dusty this box looks. Holy God. I have to fix that. Alright, anyway. Uh, I figured I would re-review this one because this was one of my first reviews because it was one of my first uh, Hornby models and that review sucks. So I figured we would uh, re-review this because I like this one. I know a lot of other people do. So also, I forgot to say in the last video, huge uh, thank you to y'all for the reception on the new episodes coming out. Uh, I understand the second one, the Thomas's Treasure episode, isn't getting as many views because I actually got a copyright claim for a cover I did, which makes no sense. Which doesn't matter because just recently YouTube turned all my ads off. So, thank you YouTube, I love y'all. That's why I'm leaving this platform in a few months. Excellent. Great job, guys. Anyway, let's try to keep it positive because we're looking at a cool model today. This is the Hornby Stepney for the Thomas and Friends range. Um, this is the limited production of a thousand run, so considerably uh, more rare than the first um, version they did. But yeah, let's try to make this one a little shorter and hopefully I don't ramble as much as I usually do. So let's crack into it. So yeah, limited production of a thousand Hornby locomotive, double O gauge electric locomotive. There's Stepney. On the side, kind of same thing. On this side, you have uh, Stepney, the item number, and limited production. On the back, this sleeve actually comes off, which is kind of clutch. And then you got, you know, Thomas, Gordon, James, all the others. I have all these now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've, I've had all these for a long time, actually, besides these two. Um, buddy on Twitter sent me these two, which was really cool. Uh, and then underneath... There's a little dent in the box, which I'm not too pleased about, but, you know, just a bunch of warnings and stuff, doesn't matter anyway. Then 2011, and peeking right behind him is the Sad Onion Kid, because he can't play with this, because he's three years and under. Alright, anyway, <laughs> let's get Stepney out of the box. So it just slides out like usual, and put the box off to the side. Here's the instructions. Ooh, God, the white balance. All right, there you go. 060 Terrier Class A1X locomotive. You got... I'm so sorry about the white balance. I'm still getting used to this camera. Um, yeah, you just got how to, like, replace motor. Nothing about DCC fitting, which is interesting. Although, I guess this was 2011, so... And then just safety note. Yada, yada, yada. All the boring stuff. But it's important to have. And then we have the this plastic bit that they put on to protect them. They used to be like all white cards to prevent the paint from getting messed up, but they moved on from that a while ago. Then a hole in the back of the box to push the engine out, which I will be using because this one is pretty uh, delicate. So it would be smart to do that. Let me zoom in. This is Stepney. I like this one a lot. This was me and my brother's favorite for the longest time. He's still one of my favorites. He is missing the vacuum pipe. Uh, it fell out years ago. I can get a spare for that real easy. But yeah, let's just, you know, talk about him. Here's the face. The face is very accurate. I'm trying to get decent light. It's, it's difficult, though, because, again, the white balance. I apologize. It, they don't do very good on these faces because they are, you know, a more pale shade. Um, yeah, there's the front. No sprung buffers on this guy. His buffers are black. I think in the show they're silver or gold or bronze. They're not black. So I guess you could count that as an inaccuracy, although I've owned this model for years and didn't know that till about a year ago. Uh, there's the roof. It is detailed. Uh, the in-cab detail is very nice as well. You can see in there what's going on. A lot of separately fitted stuff, so I dig that. It says Stepney. It's the same on the other side, although you got the, uh, what's that, the housing pump, something. God, it's been a minute. It's, it's the pump thing. The, some, West something, it's a, it's a housing pump. If there's any serious train buffs watching this that knows what that's called, please let me know, because I actually used to know what that's called, now I don't, unfortunately. You got his 
whistle or a safety valve up here. You have the dome. Just look at all the, like, look at that. Especially just after looking at Bachman, Donald, and Douglas. Look how detailed this thing is. It's crazy. Got the handrails and stuff. And, um, just because we're on the topic of detail, if you are buying one of these secondhand, it is so often to see these things broken. So I would check for that and the lever, the lever thing inside the cab here, you can see it. That's also broke because see, I can just touch it. That's usually broken and these are broken. Sometimes you'll get a handrail broken. So watch out for that if you're buying this secondhand. Also, this pump bit comes off uh, easily. It hasn't come off mine, but I've seen it broken a lot. So just, you know, keep that in mind if you're buying secondhand. Um, yeah, I've had this one for a, for a while, so. Uh, it's got these, every, I remember I used to watch a bunch of reviews and people would be like, I don't get what this bar is for. It is on the Railway series, not on the TV show because the TV show got it wrong. Because in real life, the A1 Terriers had these little uh, bars down here. If you know what they're for, let me know. I'd love to know. I, I actually don't know what they're for. I know they're on there in real life, though, so that's a plus. But yeah, you can see his wheels are super shiny because I'd be, you know, taking care of these things. Um, on the back, there's not much. You just got the buffers and the coal. Also, the the glass is like actual glazed. It's not just a. You can't just poke your hole through it. Or sorry, what? Poke your finger through the hole of the glass. Um, so, very nice touch. I don't know if it's like that on the back. Although in real life, I don't think these were glazed in real life so they could be I don't know then there's the coal load very nice the color is spot on you can't go wrong with this this is really a nice piece and it is dated 2012 underneath if I can get it to focus there you go 2012 so yeah these are fetching insane prices on eBay I think they go from anywhere from about 200 to 450 ish which is nuts but I shouldn't be saying that because I paid a lot for Spencer but again Spencer's a bigger engine this guy's really small um, but you know to each their own if that's what you want to spend on it then I mean go nuts if you got the money for it but um, I got mine because uh, I started collecting Hornby quite a bit before they were actually discontinued so I got mine at retail price I think it was something around 60 60 80 bucks to get it imported to the US so that's obviously a stellar price for this even just a railroad terrier that's a pretty good price um, there are a few things before I run them that I'd like to point out you don't run any of the the terriers but we're talking about Stepney so we'll say Stepney with a long line of like wagons or coaches because these motors are tiny in these things and it'll, it'll burn it out and don't run them for long periods of time I don't run Stepney for 30 minutes above like I always run them for 30 minutes or, or below you know I never run them above that uh, for periods of running time I, I don't run them very long because it's not good for the tiny little motors they have in there he does perform well which I'll show you in a second especially considering it's scary I don't want to think how long ago 2012 was now but I've, I've had this guy for years and he still runs perfectly so yeah let's throw him on the track and I will show you how well he runs and I think it goes without saying I rate this model a 10 because there is straight up nothing wrong with it maybe I mean if you're a TV series purist maybe the buffers and the little guardrail down there will set you off so maybe like a 9.5 or a 9 for those people but for me it's a straight up 10 I, I love this model I'm trying to think of the best way to film this okay let's give him a bit of a give him some juice like look at that like man he runs so well and he goes so smooth here here's his top speed so he's not very fast but you know Terriers weren't very fast either, were they? Here he goes past Thomas. I can't run him around the whole layout because he's going to take forever to come back. So we're just running back and forth here. There he goes, backing up. He's very quiet, which I like. He's my go-to 
when I'm running engines at night, because you know, you don't want to be loud or anything. Stepney's the go-to, because he's very quiet. Sorry, this thing was bothering me. But just because they're here, you can put them up against Donald and Douglas, because if you're a Bachman collector, not a Hornby collector, they, he scales in very, very well with uh, HO stuff, not just double O stuff, because he's smaller. You can see right there, he scales very well. I've seen a lot of people, they'll dog on the fact that he doesn't scale up well with Thomas. If we're talking about the Hornby Thomas. So here's Thomas. I'll show you what I mean. Also, you see that bit on the sky back? I'll fix that. Don't worry about that. That bothers me too. Um, yeah, so Thomas does look a bit big compared to Stepney. But um, life isn't about the TV series because in real life, guess what? That was the scaling between an E2 and a Terrier live with it. So, you know, <laughs> just how it is. But yeah, if you have like Bachman Thomas or something, he scales up very well with the Bachman engines as well. So, yeah, I give him a 10. I don't have any problems with him, really. He's, like I said, he's one of my, my go-tos and has been one of my go-tos for running for, you know, last God knows how many years, 10 plus years. So, yeah, I recommend him. Don't pay crazy money. I mean, again, if you got the money, I go nuts. But I wouldn't spend more than like, I mean, considering he's worth a lot now, I would say maybe 150 is reasonable for Stepney, which sounds nuts me saying it, but because I didn't pay that much, but I'm just thinking about now, realistically, yeah, 150 would would be the smart move for Stepney because I wouldn't be paying 400. You just don't get $400 worth of value out of them. I mean, in my opinion, they're priceless, but I, you know, just on a realistic level, you know. But he's really nice. So I recommend them. And I guess that wraps up for this review. If you want me to re-review any other models I have, or I have like a, a Hector model I made custom if you want me to do a showcase, anything y'all want to see, let me know. Because I'm mainly going to just be putting out episodes and like, you know, songs and stuff. So if there's anything extra y'all want to see in more detail, I will be making a video showing off the entire layout very shortly. I'm just touching up a few things, but yeah. He's cool. It's cool seeing him with the other engines, so. Yep. Let me know what your thoughts are on the model. Anything else y'all want to see, just let me know. And I will see you all next time.